Hey co-friends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee today. And today I'm gonna to give you 10 ways to avoid damaging your curls. You might think of damage as like the really extreme ones like bleaching your hair, relaxing your hair, or straightening it every day, or dyeing it all the time. But there's also just like little things that you might be doing every day or every week that are contributing to some sort of damage on your hair, which you might just want to avoid. So today's video is all about bettering the health of your hair. And for me, when I am washing my hair, I'm shedding like crazy. You know what? Let me show you. I think I saved it. Be right back. Look at this. This is not normal for me. Actually, this isn't even like a bad day. I'm usually shedding even more than this, where on average, before the baby, my shedding is honestly like this much. So going from this to this is a little, little extreme for me. And like I said, it's usually even more than this. So basically, I'm over it and I wanna start doing something about it. So that's why I'm gonna start taking Nutrafol. On the box, it says over shedding, it's natural. But if you're over it, we get that too literally preaching to me. So how it works is these are little hair growth supplements you take four a day, and they're supposed to promote hair growth and enhance hair quality. So this portion of today's video is sponsored by Nutrafol. I like that they have products for everyone. So this is the one for women. They have one for men. They have one for women, I believe 45 and up, and they have some for postpartum. I'm so mad at myself for not trying this sooner. I could have been having less shedding than I am if I would have started sooner. The postpartum ones were actually developed by an OBGYN and they are breastfeeding friendly. So I was about to switch to the postpartum ones, but to be honest, I'm kind of winding down on my breastfeeding. I'm basically done. But definitely choose accordingly because there are options. Oh, there's even a vegan one. Everybody's happy. So let's talk about the women ones. The, the claims on the website are just speaking to me. So this is supposed to give us visibly thicker volume. I love volume. Visibly less shedding. Please. Hair that grows faster, stronger, and longer. Visibly thicker lashes and brows. <laughs> always need that, reduces the feeling of stress, <laughs> me all the time, and improves sleep. That, is this just magic in a bottle? As a postpartum mom, stress and sleep are two things that kind of just go hand in hand with motherhood, let alone these cute little baby bangs that we get. So because this is really starting to bug me, I was doing some research on hair growth and hair shedding, and I was watching this video with these licensed dermatologists, and they were talking about some main ingredients not being the common biotin, which is in here, which is a very common ingredient in a lot of hair growth vitamins, but what they said is even more beneficial are antioxidants, ashwagandha, curcumin, and saw palmetto. I've honestly never heard of these things, but apparently these are like the main ones that actually have shown hair growth results. Tell me why. I was like, I wonder if those are in Nutrafol and all of those are in here. That, that was kind of like the deciding factor that really made me excited and made me believe that this product was going to give me some real true results. So here's my before. We, are, we aren't even, are we touching the eyebrow? Barely. This is the before people. I will be back with the after. But if you don't wanna wait and you wanna join me on this hair growth journey because why wait for me when we could be growing together? Make sure you shop Nutrafol by using my link in the description box to save some money. So now that you know how I'm going to improve my hair from the inside out, here are some outside things that you're probably doing that I want you to stop. Starting off with number one, heat. You might be thinking, yes, we know, don't straighten your hair, don't relax it, but not just that type of heat. Don't forget the sun is uh, kind of hot as well and your hot showers or even diffusing on a high heat setting. You got to be careful with all these things. I am definitely guilty of boiling hot showers. I love a nice hot steamy shower, but it's not good for our hair. You should be rinsing with cool water. When you're going in the sun, that's also hot. You can get damage from the very powerful rays of the sun. So some things that I like to use to protect that, there is the Curlsmith Miracle Shield. Um, this is good for heat defense, environmental protection. So is the Rizos Curl Hairspray 
and their new Beach Waves Texturizing Hair Salt Spray. These both have red algae, which helps shield from the environment damage. So these are both great. Number two, which all of you guys should know this one, which is how you're sleeping on your hair. You want to be sleeping on a satin pillowcase. Sleeping on a cotton pillowcase is gonna to create too much friction on your hair, which is gonna be causing breakage, and you're also gonna wake up with a really frizzy head. So if you want to reduce frizz and breakage, dish the cotton pillowcase, get a satin or silk pillowcase. I also like to sleep with my hair up in a pineapple. Nope, it's not just a fruit. It's a ponytail on the very top of your head. I am a little obsessed with Curlfriend Collective scrunchies. These are huge jumbo scrunchies, literally made for curly hair. I just go like this, and then I put my hair just one time around on the top of my head and just let it fall over. Usually when my hair is shorter, it looks more like a pineapple, but now that it's longer, it's more like a waterfall, if you will, a palm tree. That way when you sleep and you roll around, only the under part of your hair might get a little frizzy, but no one's gonna see that part. And it's also not gonna get frizzy because it's gonna be on a pillowcase. This pillowcase is from Kitsch, but Curlfriend Collective also has a lot of cute silk options. And then the morning you just slide it out. You're not pulling it, no breakage, easy. Which takes me to number three, tight hairstyles. I know we all like a slick look. We like the Kardashian slick back, if we will. We like braids, maybe weaves, maybe extensions, but all this is adding tension to your scalp. If you ever notice you're getting like little bumps or a rash, or you're like in pain or have a headache, that is your body telling you that your hairstyle is too tight. Do not ignore those signs. It's not gonna be good for your scalp or your hair growth, and it could create lots of breakage, especially around your hairline. Every now and then, a tight style, okay for a very short amount of time, but if possible, especially postpartum, we don't wanna put a lot of tension on our hair. And that's where these big jumbo or any type of silk scrunchie is gonna be better. Keep it loose and let something that just slides out easily. Number four, harsh brushing. Once you get that brush in your hand, don't go crazy because you got a conditioner with good slip. You want to be as gentle as possible. I personally have been finger detangling for years now, and I just prefer it to a brush because I could just find the knot and then just gently pull apart where need be. If it's super tangled and I'm in a rush, I will use a brush every now and then, but then I want to brush starting from the ends and then work your way up. You don't want it to start at the top and then pull it down that's gonna to create too much tension. You could be breaking off more hair than you need to. So remember when brushing, it's always good to have some type of conditioner in your hair that'll create more slip, meaning it's gonna be easier to detangle and you're not gonna be yanking on your hair as much. So a really good conditioner, a really good deep conditioner, or even applying a leave-in conditioner once you get out the shower for some more slip. Number five, avoiding heat protectants and over blow drying or diffusing. This is my Dyson. I absolutely love this expensive blow dryer, but I will say it gets extremely hot. I would never blow dry my hair on the highest heat setting because it's just too much. And you can get heat damage from a blow dryer or diffuser because it's hot. So I would recommend letting your hair air dry first. That's what I always do. I always get the best results when I air dry to about 80, 85% if I have time. And then that way I'm minimizing the amount of heat I'm putting on my hair because I don't have to go from soaking wet to dry. If your hair is soaking wet and you're running out of time, you could use a higher heat setting for a short amount of time, but make sure you go back down to a lower setting as soon as possible. If you ever wonder what this little blue button is or the little snowflake that might be on your blow dryer diffuser, that is a cool shot button, which is good to just kind of cool down your hair. If you're going like this and it literally feels hot to the touch, cool it down with the cool shot button and lower that heat setting. You also want to use a heat protectant. This is something that I'm even still working on being better at because when I think of heat protectant, we always think of like when you're about to straighten your hair, but you want to use something like the Curlsmith Miracle Shield or Pattern has a heat protectant and so does Myel Organics. All these are sulfate, paraben, silicone free. I'd recommend spraying any of those on your hair before you diffuse. Number six, overusing protein treatments. Yes, protein treatments are great for our hair, but if you already have a good protein moisture balance and your hair has enough protein, adding more protein can cause protein overload. And that's also not good. Getting too much protein can make your hair stiff, 
dry and brittle. So you gotta find that nice balance between having protein in your hair and having moisture in your hair. And I have a full video on protein moisture balance. If you guys wanna watch that, I'll put it in the description box as well. So yes, maybe do a protein treatment like once a month, but don't overdo it. Protein treatments are more important if you have high porosity hair, colored hair, or any type of damaged hair. Number eight, ignoring your scalp health. We often always look at like our curls and like the definition and the shine. We're worried about the length, but what's more important than anything is our scalp. This is where the hair is growing out of. So if you have a lot of product buildup, if it's dry, flaky, scratchy, itchy, that's gonna be more of an issue that's going to affect if it's gonna grow. Just the overall health of your hair is all coming from our scalp. So make sure you get a really good clarifying shampoo. I do prefer ones that are sulfate free so it's not too harsh on my scalp. If you do wanna use sulfate, you could, I guess, use it like once every blue moon. I would not use a sulfate shampoo for your every week wash kind of routine, but you do wanna have a very clean scalp. This is also why I personally try to stay away from silicone because that could also cause more product buildup. So keep your scalp clean, which takes me to number nine, which is over shampooing and over washing your hair. Back in the day before I had my channel and I didn't know what to do with my curls, I was washing my hair every day. I didn't know anything about refreshing. I didn't know anything about creating a cast, but you do not wanna wash your hair every day because you just don't need to, especially if you have curly hair. That's one of the beauties of our hair. We could just refresh and wash our hair once a week and we're fine. You don't wanna strip out too much of the natural oils in our hair. So if you do use a shampoo, you really only need it on your scalp and then let whatever is left rinse down to the rest of your hair. Maybe if I had like a colored gel in my hair or I don't know, I, I just knew I needed to really clean the lengths. I could add a little bit more, but you don't really wanna be like adding shampoo to your scalp and your hair. Whatever falls down is good enough. Too much shampoo will dry out your hair. And number 10, avoid sleeping with wet hair. I don't know how some of you guys do it. I hate sleeping with wet hair. I refuse to do it. I'm not someone that washes my hair at night. But if that's the only time that you have, you can, but I would suggest at least wet plopping. Wet plopping is when you put all of your hair into like a t-shirt. They're also actual plops. This is an actual plopping towel made to plop your curls either overnight or while you're getting ready straight out the shower. So it has like the little snaps. You could snap it in the back of your head, roll it. I'll probably insert a picture for you. It looks like this once you put it on. Um, this is how you do it. This is from Moonstone. Small woman owned new business. Go ahead and support them. This was the only way I would recommend sleeping with wet hair. Otherwise, don't do it. Our hair is most delicate when it's wet. So if you're just sleeping with wet hair and you're rolling around, unless you literally sleep like a mummy, you're gonna be risking your hair breaking. And that's the last thing we want while we're sleeping. So try to wash your hair early in the day so it's dry by bedtime. Diffuse a little bit if you need to, but you want your hair to be dry while you're sleeping in a silk scrunchy. If you also are putting your hair up in a ponytail while it's wet, you're also creating tension at the weakest time when your hair is soaking wet. So try to avoid really tight styles in general, but especially tight wet styles. So those are my 10 tips for you guys to keep in mind to make sure you're maximizing the health of your hair and to avoid little things that you might be doing in your daily routine to avoid some damage. Let me know which one of these tips is something that you definitely need to work on or what has been a game changer for you with the health of your hair. And don't forget if you want to join me on my Nutrafol journey, I'm so excited. Use my link so you guys can get your order as well. I currently have uh, three boxes, which should last me for three months. It says for the best results, take for a minimum of three to six months and beyond. So this is just the beginning of my journey and I will be updating you here on YouTube and on Instagram with my hair growth results. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new videos every week. You also can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Ms. Bianca Renee. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today. Yeah.